Cotton, what exactly are you doing? Oh, I'm cosplaying as your subspecies, sir. Cotton, for the last time, I am not a monster! Well, there are a number of facts that say otherwise. And even if I was a monster, I would never be caught in pink! <gasps> so you are a monster! Just a different kind of monster! Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, with all the title updates approaching the game and new monsters along with it, there feels like no better time than the present to talk about some specific monsters that I would absolutely love to see. Specifically, the return of some subspecies whose base monsters are already in Iceborne, with the idea that these are all monsters that would be, you know, easy for the developers to bring into the game, at least in comparison to something like a totally brand new monster with a new model and completely new attacks and the whole shebang of it all. So today, ladies and gentlemen, is my list of the top five subspecies to come to Iceborne, with the caveats being that their base monster must already be a part of Iceborne and I am also including rare species, as not all subspecies are rare species, but all rare species are subspecies, so I say they count. Now, without further ado then, let's begin with... Number 5! Oh, what a... burn? <laughs> <laughs> that sort of thing could get a man... fired? <laughs> I think he was... hot... for... you? <laughs> That's enough. Molten Tigrex. Now, as far as monsters go, sometimes you have creatures designed around being cute, sometimes you have monsters designed around being unique, and sometimes you just have the straight up personification of cool. And Molten Tigrex here is exactly that. It's also hot. One thing for me to point out here early on is that I really do consider visuals to be important for this, as we are talking about monsters coming to Iceborne, and every returning monster in Iceborne has had unbelievable graphical updates. So obviously one of the first things that I want to do is acknowledge how this thing would look in New World graphics. I mean, come on. We happy? Vincent? We happy? Yeah, we happy. Like, just as, as a base creature, like before the, yes, multiple stages of glowing veins all over his body, which would just look sublime. And then his moveset, oh, his moveset is absolutely fire blast, but still Tigrex, so it's still super chargy, spinny, and bitey, but pretty much all of those also have blast elements now too, and on top of that, he can leave bits of blast powder around the place just to add even more danger. Now overall, in a vacuum, my feelings about Molten Tigrex are entirely positive. I think he is an incredible example of a rare species done well, and he would look ridiculously cool in the new world, not to mention how big of a deal it would be to update his moveset. It, it would be great, however, in I Born, we have the return of Tigrex, and also the return of uh, the Brute Tigrex. My Tigrex quota has been officially met. Don't get me wrong, I, I love Tigrex and all variations of him, but after having the return of base Tigrex and louder Tigrex, there are simply a number of things that I would rather see than exploding Tigrex. So while Molten Tigrex may be significantly higher on a list of just my general top five subspecies in the series, on a list designed around which monsters I'd like to see make the leap to Iceborne, he's stuck down here at number five. Number four. Jade Baroth. Okay, hear me out on this one. So, Baroth, salt of the earth monster, everyone loves the guy, hard worker, all that good stuff, right? But when was the last time you actually thought about him and his mechanics? Baroth is a low tier monster, so he's purposefully designed to be simple and easy, but he has a really nice little fight, and visually, he is a super interesting monster. Now imagine how he looks, but practically made of ice, reflective, translucent, and with a jade sheen. Yeah, it is slightly underwhelming in those classic third generation Monster Hunter graphics, but try and picture that, but in world, in Iceborne, in the type of detail where you can actually work out what material a monster's skin is made of, and with how beautiful, just straight up, everything looks in the Horfrost Reach. He would fit in perfectly there, and of course, look even better surrounded by a place that looks that good. And of course, in a Horfrost Reach Guiding Lands extension, you know, just saying, if they did do that kind of an update, there is one low tier monster I would absolutely 
really like to see shoved in there, and he's right here. As for his fight, we would have to make the big decision on the snowman ailment. I was frozen today! As he does use it, or cause it, however, it has not been used at all in the new world. You could just go with big globs of snow like the mud from regular Baroth, but giving icy buff, but if you do that, then the only unique thing about Jade Baroth is the fact that it can do a U-turn charge. So, really, you either have to bring back snowman ailment for Jade Baroth, which does seem like a big ask, or you find another way to exemplify the snow shaking off, like making tiny patches of slippery ice or something, but uh, I'm at the point where I totally trust the developers to do a great job with the moveset side of a returning monster. I mean, they totally make him work, and I would be super happy to see Jade Baroth and Iceborne on the pure idea of his looks alone. So whatever moveset they applied to him, whatever it was, I would still be happy. Number three. Of all the timelines, this is clearly the darkest, which is why I propose we commit to being evil. I've made us all black goatees out of felt. I suggest you put them on until you're able to grow your own. From now on, I'm Evil Abed. Stygian Zenoker. Oh man, I spent ages gushing about the potential for visuals with Jade Baroth, but it just totally pales in comparison to this pale monster. Zenoger is honestly just straight up one of the best looking monsters in the entirety of Iceborne. Like opinion aside, he is objectively just totally gorgeous. The definition of his scales, his fur, his horns even, and the little spikes on his back that are just tiny little homes for thunderbugs, and they all look like tiny beehives with such fantastic detail, and that's before you even talk about his fight effects. For me, lightning is simply the best looking element in current generation Monster Hunter, with an argument for just being the best looking element generally in the series as a whole. But in Iceborne specifically, the lightning effects are just on another level. Stygian Zenogar here uses what is essentially dragon light Black and red lightning that does dragon damage. Yeah, that's right. Imagine current lightning animations, but in red and black. Yes! And then on top of that, his color scheme changes from blue, white, and yellow to white, red, and black, which is just like S tier color combination right there. It literally always looks good. He would be something incredibly special. Special. There's just no doubt about that in my mind. Moveset wise, he has a lot of crossover with regular Zenogre, as you might expect, though most moves are enhanced in some way, and any instances of regular lightning are replaced with dragon lightning, which gives you dragon debuff. As well, the dragon element little balls are capable of being essentially shot at you rather than just slowly moving towards you for added danger. But for Stygian, more so than the two on this list that have come up before him, I think Iceborne could have a lot of mechanical changes in store for him. Dragon lightning is a thing I could totally see having more of its own identity as an element now that we have better technology to show it, rather than simply being red lightning. And I, for one, would be absolutely ecstatic to see what Capcom would do with this in the new world. Number two. Arashi Kirin. This monster has been on the expected New Worlds Edition list since literally the initial release of Monster Hunter World, on a leak that provided to be correct on 90% of its predictions and honestly, what is there that hasn't been said about him? Visually speaking, it is essentially a very dark blue Kirin with purple fur and a pinkish horn, which does just look very nice, and I wouldn't mind having him around by any means, though as far as his model goes, he isn't that much of a difference from base Kirin. It's when you get to his active fight that the fun comes in, and surprisingly, I am still talking about the visuals. This fight, based around the idea of a Kirin that controls ice, is an absolute thing of beauty, and the reason this monster is here on this list is undoubtedly, undeniably, 100% because of the ridiculous potential for this monster in Iceborne. Just think of Velkana's attacks in the New World, and elementally speaking, Arashi Kirin has the potential for way cooler attacks than Velkana, as Kirin are far more elementally powerful to make up for their physical weakness. And sure, you'd have to bring back classic attacks and patterns in some way, but the sky really is the limit when it comes to the fight design of this creature. The only things it would be limited by are the imagination of the developers and the technical restraints of the game. And to get to see a monster, a, a Kirin subspecies, at the absolute limit of the technology of the game sounds like something truly exciting to me, which is exactly why Arashi Kirin has made it to this spot on this list. Number one. How long have you been standing there? An hour. An hour? Are you serious? I've mastered the ability of standing so incredibly still that I've become invisible to the eye. <laughs> 
Lucent Nargakuga. And hey, look, everyone, I put a Nargakuga at the top of the list so you can stop hating me now. Visually speaking, Lucent Nargakuga is really cool. The scale is essentially just taking a more metallic sheen with a slightly bluer tint, though the fur gains some white patches and the chest goes this metallic gold that just lightly gradients out and... Oh, it's just gorgeous. With the forelimbs also getting a bit of funky coloring, and this coloring as a whole is fantastic, but the fact that it represents the idea of translucence is even cooler. Taking advantage of a color scheme that is normally just associated with reflections and glare, and incorporating it into the very base concept of Nargakuga. And just imagine how it would look in Iceborne too. Just imagine the extra quality and detail on each and every one of those body parts. I mean, I could imagine parts of him being straight up completely reflective, and how cool would that be? Anyone who has watched me talk about old monsters coming to Iceborne for an extended period of time knows that there is one mechanic that I have a little bit of a soft spot for, meaning that I really, really want to see it done in the new world more than anything else. And that mechanic is invisibility. That explains everything. And that right there is the main mechanical change of Lucent Argakuga, is the ability to reflect light or some other jargon that explains turning invisible for short periods of time, allowing him to become the perfect ambush predator. But for the most part, the changes to this monster in the old world were all just playing around this mechanic, though he also had a healthy dose of poison spike projectile shenanigans, as well as the double tail slam that is now a part of just regular Nargakuga, so you would need a good old mechanical rework. That said, the way that I went into this list, with the idea being which of these I want to see in future DLC to this expansion, uh, this is much less about the implementation that they've had in older games, and more about their potential as a whole. As far as I'm concerned, of all of the existing rare species and subspecies monsters currently in the game, Lucent Nargakuga simply has the highest potential, the highest chance to become an amazing, amazing monster. Though that said, I would be pretty damn happy to see any one of these monsters on this list come to the new world. All right, everyone, I've been Cotton Dinosaur, and this has been my list of the top five subspecies to come to Iceborne. Do you like my choices? Which monsters would you have chosen instead? Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. This is the brand new outro to tell you all the things that you do that we love So let's start with something simple and say Oh we love your eyes When they're watching us play video games When we make a bunch of jokes that are kinda lame And when they gaze upon our failures as we try to kill the monsters Or important important news about the kingdom and Amelia Rage, Cotton, and Hollow are all here Talking about the things you want to hear So if you want to be the first to hear Like and subscribe and the bell and we'll cheer Some of you are patrons even though We are all the noobs and you're the pros There's nothing we can do to thank you No, really, there's nothing we could possibly do. Goodbye.